Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. Claudine Gay is now the former president of Harvard. In a surprise turn of events, she handed in her resignation, but we all know that she basically jumped to avoid being pushed. Now, before this, Harvard was saying that she wasn't going anywhere, that they were going to let her keep her position, but apparently I can tell that some of that big donor money must have finally been talking. However, if the board at Harvard thought that simply tossing Gay overboard would calm the right-wing nuts down and get them off their backs, they were wrong. Bill Ackman, the billionaire anti-black crusader I told you about in an earlier video about this subject, he is now demanding that Harvard's entire board has to resign too. Why? He says he doesn't like what he calls DEI policies, so we see that when dealing with these psychopathic racists, giving them a crumb only encourages them to threaten you more and demand everything else you have too. For the white right, this was never about Claudine Gay. She was simply a proxy for the real target. This was about their asinine jihad to force otherwise respectable educational institutions to become right-wing re-education camps. And trying to take over universities is also important because the white right has been trying and failing for decades now to establish its own prestigious universities to compete with the liberal colleges and universities, but these are all recognized for what they are, right-wing vanity projects. When Harvard or Yale puts out a study or a report, it's seen as having intellectual and academic legitimacy. On the other hand, when a Liberty University or a Hillsdale College puts out any sort of report, it's ignored, like it doesn't even exist. Now, the white right has a number of so-called think tanks like the Heritage Foundation, the Manhattan Institute, and others, but unless you're a Republican politician or a Fox News viewer, you've never even heard of them. And unless you're a right-wing nut, you don't place any weight on anything they say either. So the white right, having realized they lost the culture a long time ago, they're now trying to ban black history books in school, have the state take over universities. They failed to earn any credibility on their own, so now they're trying to see if they can snatch someone else's. Claudine Gay's resignation is, of course, a firing, but this isn't the first time that someone's been accused of not punishing people for alleged hate speech on Harvard's campus. Marty Peretz was a professor at Harvard, but he then became editor-in-chief of the New Republic magazine, and he made it a point to attack black people and Muslims frequently. In 2010, Harvard decided to give Peretz an undergraduate research fund in his name. So a man who they knew to be a mouth-frothing racist, and Harvard, in spite of all that, sets up a research fund for him and in his name. And when Harvard was asked to justify this decision, they simply said, he has a right to free speech. Say, does anyone remember how the president of Harvard was forced to resign after this scandal? Me neither. Gee, where was Bill Ackman at when this happened? Where was the right-wing hate sphere at then? Oh, I'm sorry, the New Republic is part of the right-wing hate sphere. Well, that explains why they were all quiet about it. So at long last, we finally have an answer to the age-old question, where does the white right think that free speech ends? When it's something they don't want to hear. Racist white professors, oh, I mean former professors, can say any racist tripe they want, but a black president of Harvard has to be fired not because she said something, but because angry people on the right say she didn't stop other people from saying things. And where are the black feminists at to stick up for Claudine Gay? Well, they're probably busy watching a matinee showing of the color purple right now. Al Sharpton has crawled out from under Joe Scarborough's nether regions and offered a defense of Miss Gay. Isn't that something? Al Sharpton is sticking up for Claudine Gay, which is a hell of a lot more than Michelle Obama's done. Not a word from her. Though the right-wing nuts are claiming that Obama had been quietly lobbying for Gay to keep her job behind the scenes. He is a Harvard graduate himself, after all. But where's Oprah Winfrey at? Where's Agent Duvernay at? Where's Tarana Burke at? Eli Mistal, who was cursing and carrying on over Bill Cosby, because Eli Mistal is just so eager to defend women. Well, here's a black woman who a bunch of white racists began a smear campaign against, and Eli Mistal is all quiet. Where's all the phony feminists who were saying that they wanted to protect black women? Where are they at? And look at who the white right gets to attack Sharpton. They get the infamous expert self-hating butt-kisser Sage Steele. Will someone please tell this heifer that she's not getting a full-time media gig again, ever? The bootlick class of black intellectuals are real quiet right now. All of these college-educated and Ivy League Negroes running around telling us all how smart they are and how it's crucial to challenge systemic racism. It doesn't get any more systemic than a political and media attack on a black woman merely for having the same policy regarding non-blacks as had applied to black people. That was the real problem they had. 
They could care less about any claims of plagiarism. After all, these right-wing nuts can't even read. Because up until a couple of days ago, the white right was admitting that they had pretty much given up hope that they would find a way to get Claudine Gay to be forced out. Sure, you had Rupert Murdoch's little propaganda mills like the New York Post and others who had been attacking her nonstop, but it didn't seem to be working. The news cycle had long since moved on. So that begs the question, what happened suddenly that made Harvard instantly decide that they wanted to make her leave? Obviously, the timing plays into this. She's been gotten rid of at the beginning of the year, so what that tells me is they've probably been thinking already that they would just basically dump her as soon as the new year came. And you know it was those rich racist donors who were demanding this. They desperately wanted a trophy head on their wall, and they were determined they were going to catch this big black whale no matter what. This wasn't some popular uprising from Harvard students. This was AstroTurf by the same wealthy white supremacists who we've seen manufacturing those school board protests. They saw a black person who didn't jump when they said jump, and that infuriated them, but worse, it made them scared. They definitely don't want something like that to become habit-forming, so they've been desperately trying to reverse this L, and they did it with the help of Harvard's board. Now, here's a question for you. If the board of Harvard had been black, better yet, if this was an HBCU that this had happened at, and there was a rich white donor who demanded that Claudine Gay be removed, do you truly think the outcome would have been any different? The black folks who you see on the boards of these white universities, they see themselves as social climbers just like the HBCUs. And speaking of which, HBCUs are ground zero for sellouts and bootlicks. They would have fired Claudine Gay at the first sign of controversy. She wouldn't even have made it this far if it was an HBCU that had been caught up in this firestorm. If Claudine Gay had been president of Morehouse or Spillman, she would have been gone right after that congressional hearing. Claudine Gay is, or is it was now, part of the talented 10th. The approved of Negroes who got a good job, a good position, and thought to themselves that meant they were in. I'm not glad that this happened to her, but truth be told, her being a thorn in the side of the white right, that was pretty much the only thing that gave her value in my eyes. She wasn't really reppin' team black. Not only has she been abandoned by her white liberal allies, but also by the black feminists and other left-of-center folks who like to attend those cheese and croissant parties in these college towns and who figure being able to say that they know people who work at Harvard makes themselves sound smart. But there's also another incident that happened in the last 24 hours that I think deserves mention because it seems similar, not necessarily in form, but definitely in character, to what happened to Claudine Gay. In New Jersey, an imam named Hassan Sharif was gunned down outside of his own mosque by an as-yet-unidentified killer. Now, with the war in Israel going on, there's been a number of Muslims who have been attacked or killed in the United States. But in those other cases, it was because they looked Arab. In this case, however, you unquestionably had someone who was murdered simply for being Muslim. But even though the body's not cold yet, the white authorities are already saying this wasn't a hate crime. Now, how would they know that? They haven't even finished their investigation, and yet they're already putting this out there, that this wasn't a hate crime. Now, does anyone believe they're saying that simply because the victim is a Muslim, or perhaps because he's black, and whenever black people are harmed or killed, the police always say it's not a hate crime before they even bother to gather a single clue? This knee-jerk denial that it was a hate crime was so jarring and out of place that even the white media had to admit that this was unusual, with Reuters themselves saying the DA typically doesn't reveal that kind of information at such an early stage. Yeah, you kind of get the feeling that maybe the fix is in on this one. Speaking of clues, the police are claiming they don't have any suspects. Now, I want the black Muslims in the sound of my voice to understand something. The largest and most well-known Muslim organization in America, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, is going right along with what the police are saying. They're saying that they hope the killer turns themselves in. When it's black Muslims who are killed, the outrage is never as high as it is as when an Arab Muslim is killed, and that tells you everything you need to know about organizations like CARE. Now, you're probably saying, what if it turns out that this wasn't related to the war in Israel? that this actually was some random act of violence. Then what would you say, Professor Truth? What I would say is that there were at least two mass shootings of Asians in the last few years where everyone said it had to be a hate crime, but it later turned out the killers were Asian themselves. And yet that didn't stop anyone from calling for an anti-Asian hate crime law. And it didn't stop the white media drumbeat for it either. These two stories are flip sides of the same coin. 
Black people who think that because they're part of an academic community or part of a religious community, that if push comes to shove, they'll be treated and protected like the non-black members of these communities, and time and again we see that's just not true. Both Claudine Gay and Hassan Sharif are examples of what happens when you put your faith in the wrong people. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Eric Bailey, Ron Rico Foster, Darlet Hall, Asfeo Dingaswayo, and Jeffrey Williams. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.